so hello to all you people who follow my blog and website we're trying something different today which is making a video and I thought since I need to service the clean up the carb of this cart uh, it would be interesting to make a little video to test my camera and internet to see how this works out and if we can maybe start making a little more content uh, specifically video content so first things first I'm removing this card it's a dirty card which hasn't been cleaned or serviced in uh, maybe maybe two years I think it's been a while I'd have to check the Instagram post although after now actually I think I cleaned it last year so about a year since this has been cleaned so uh, I just thought it would be an interesting start to a video or a video series to show about these cards uh, people ask a lot of questions about the Weber so I was thinking of making a video series about uh, tuning the Weber tuning Webers and basically everything you'd want to know about this setup although I was when I was making an outline of it uh, it seems like it's going to be a lot of work to to get into all of the details for card tuning and, um, and building a setup like this. So I figured I'll do a quick one first about uh, just cleaning and servicing it. And if there's enough interest, then later on we'll do a longer one or a longer series of videos um, detailing all the aspects of actually tuning, tuning the card. See how this goes. So, the well, first thing you have to remove the carb, uh, which is basically four bolts. So these things are. One of the reasons we like them is because they're actually mechanically simple. Um, a lot simpler than what, the, what what would have been the stock carburetor on this car. So the Weber has basically fewer parts. Uh, which is what also makes them easier to service and more robust. So, for those who are new to following the page, or this page, or this, or my YouTube channel, um, this is a Weber 40 DCOE that is installed on my 79 Lancer. And I'm removing it now clean it up because it's really dirty and actually uh, I think the idle circuit is clogged which, why it was, which is why it was running a little funny uh, the last time I drove the car so the way I have it built on this car is that The way I have it built on this car is that I'm using the stock linkage, the original linkage. Uh, these older Lancers use the mechanical linkage instead of a cable. So that's my connection to the to the car. And uh, I started recording this video just as I started working on it so you should see basically how long it takes to get these things off which is actually not very long. there we go drop the washer it's not very long to get the card off of the car uh, drop two washers and two washers and uh, there you go 
carbs out. Okay, uh, now we have the carb off, so we're going to take it apart, and I'm using this clean white tile to show maybe how much dirt is going to come out of here, because I'm running this with uh, open filters, um, because that's a particular quirk of our setup. We can't run filters because the car tends to backfire, so... It, um, if you had any filter or sock on the air horn, it'll just burn it off. And another particular challenge <laughs> that I'm going to be doing tonight here is I'm trying to get this done within 10 minutes because our camera is an entry level SLR uh, Nikon 3100, and it can only take videos in 10 minute segments. So I'm going to see if I can finish uh, stripping and cleaning up this carb and putting it back together before my video time runs out because I also don't want to edit this too much because I don't know how to edit yet as of the making of this video tonight. So first things first is to take off the top which is the jet inspection cover top cover of the carb so get all those screws off and the top cover slowly comes out so there you go brass floats and everything next you can see inside the carb, which has some amount of gas, gasoline left in there. Uh, you'll see that spill out later. And then for the purpose of cleaning, because we will be cleaning inside of this, uh, we want to be able to clean all the galleys and orifices of the carb. I'll take off the jets. So for a Weber carb, you have two pairs of jets per carb. Uh, those are the idle jets. So maybe we can start with a little bit of lesson on the Weber carb. The idle circuit is not just the idle circuit. It basically controls everything below around 2,000 RPM, uh, 3,000 RPM. Then you have the main jets, which controls everything from 3,000 RPM onwards. So basically we want to get them off so that we can get um, our carb cleaner spray into the galley inside. So that actually takes care of stripping the top part of the carb. And you'll see this now, it is just going to spill whatever little gasoline is inside the carb is going to spill out. Then, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but you can see a good amount of dirt on the mouth of the air horns. Next is we take off the air horns because this is what has the, these are hard to get off sometimes, this is what has the throat of the carb and this is really what gets, what gets a good amount of the dirt when, when the car is running. Weber 40, the, in Weber 40, the air horn actually holds a lot of the carb together. You have the, all of these little, little tabs and stuff that, that lock it together. And boy, this, is, this guy is already quite dirty. So, as I mentioned in the first cut of the video, probably been a year or two, I forget, 
I think I took it apart last year. So this is about a year's worth of running around in dirty, dirty Philippine air. Well, you can see here, that's really quite dirty and grimy. This plate, um, I made this plate um, fabricated out of aluminum. It's basically, its job is to hold the throttle return spring. I have a for for the application for my car. We were actually able to maintain the the factory pedal linkage. So when you get all of that out, your air horns will pull out. One, two. Then your uh, next part here will be the auxiliary venturi which sometimes they don't want to come out but you have to be careful with them because they can get damaged and you don't want to damage the basically this is the part that uh, pulls the fuel into the car when the main circuit is operating and sometimes when it gets dirty, it becomes hard to pull out. There you go. So, two. And then if you reach in there, you'll pull out the main inventory. So, maybe when we get into tuning the carbs, You'll see the story about this. Uh, the main venturi has a number. These are 32 mm's. That controls the actual size of the carburetor. So, there you go. And that is actually the Weber carb, all taken apart. And it's time to clean. So, cleaning, very basic. You get your carb cleaner. I just buy the cheapest one that they have at the at the auto supply. And that's just going to you know kind of melt away a lot of the dirt that gets trapped in here. Now the important thing to get cleaned out is this inside of the barrel. Because that's where that's where a lot of the dirt ends up getting stuck, and that's why we take the jets off because we want to be able to get a good amount of carb cleaner into there. You can see it come out because that's all connected. So. As I mentioned, for this card, the, I had a feeling the idle circuit was getting clogged, so I, that's why I wanted to take it apart today and clean it up. Oh, also forgot, there's another pair of jets here, which is the other pair of jets, which are the oops, um, pump jets. Pump jets, uh, their basic job is in between the idle and main circuit. When you suddenly go full throttle on the car, you need that extra shot of gasoline to compensate for the time it will take the main jet to catch up with the idle circuit, with the idle jet. And that's where the pump comes in. So every time you step on the gas, that pump is going to shoot. And you can kind of see the dirt running off there. This is actually the, this hole here actually.
we didn't reach our <laughs> we didn't make it for 10 minutes uh, anyway for those curious about or for those who know about Weber's you'll notice some curious differences about this carb one is this guy which is our aircon idle up and the other one is this one which makes this a fairly rare uh, Weber carb uh, this is uh, a vacuum port for distributor vacuum advance not all Weber carbs have these so that's a, a nice feature and probably one reason why I've kept this card for so long tuning these papers you'll learn that you can actually adjust all of these all of these little parts individually which makes for uh, for one reason why Weber's are actually so tunable you can see that you can see that squirting there that's the that's the pump this is the pump that controls the, the shot of gas that goes into the carb. Then we also want to be able to clean in here. Uh, these are what are called progression holes. So the idea is uh, the idle circuit basically meters fuel into these small holes and as the throttle opens up, it opens up more of these little holes inside the card, and these are what tend to get dirty. So, my card has a lot of progression holes. So, we want to clean that up, get good, get good flow of card cleaner through those progression holes. And you can see it coming out there. That's <laughs> that's why we that's why I used the white tile just to show just to show how much dirt these things take when when uh, so in general I'll go through a I'll go through a pan of this card cleaner just because I'm I'm really generous about what I how much I use when I do this. Because you wanna make sure that you really clean, get everything nice and clean. So once you have that, uh, the top part this doesn't really get dirty. This is just a float, float and needle bearing. Uh, not too much to get dirty there. Okay. Get the outside cleaned up a little bit. And then set that aside there. And then these guys uh, these secondary parts. These tend to get really dirty. The air horns take a lot of the dirt. I'm wearing gloves because uh, you gotta wear gloves when you do this because all of these things, these are this here. Uh, you gotta wear gloves because this card cleaner stuff really stinks the skin. Okay, and that's that's pretty much it. Cleaning. Then afterwards, uh, when we're done cleaning, then we can start putting it back together. Uh, there's a particular guide, just watch out for that guide pin there for the primary venturi. So, primary venturi, slide them all the way to the back. 
this is when we get into it, into tuning this later, if we make that video, you see that there is a, there are mats that basically you size that primary venturi. That number actually is sized for a specific engine size and target RPM that you want the engine to run at. That has to fit. Sometimes it's dirty. That has to fit kind of tightly in there. There you go. After that uh, comes the auxiliary venturi. Most of the dirt is on the air horns, so that's a good thing. I mean, they're not designed to catch dirt, but pretty much the dirt only sticks to the air horns. Custom made by me. Extra short for the Mitsubishi. Okay, and once you have once you have those locked in, uh, you can put the, the tabs back. So the tabs basically. Your, uh, air for securing the air horn to the car body because the air horn, oops, the air horn holds everything together. See, now that it's not dirty, <laughs> everything just threads in. Oops, everything just threads in nice and easy. Saves a lot. <laughs> I don't know how many more minutes I have on this other other book. Here, basically, we just reassemble everything now. <laughs> okay.
past 20 minutes already on this. So, uh, pump jet aligns with the notch. Then you can, you can tighten down the jet covers. Put the little jet covers back. This is going to be long. I don't know how put this up on YouTube. This is going to be like a 30 minute long uh, video actually. So pump jets on and now we can put back the idle jets. A lot of these, all these jets actually, um, pump, idle, and main, you can access this from the from the little cover that goes on top of the card, and you can adjust them uh, on the fly. Actually, you can uh, you can take the main jets out without take, turning the engine off because the carb will idle. It'll idle on the idle jet. Idle on the idle jet while you tune the main jet. I think I will make that video about tuning the carb. So that's the inspection cover. That's what lets you access the jets while the while the carb is installed. And basically, you tighten these down, and you're done. It's 11:49 uh, at night, so I'm not going to be able to. Well, I could, but I won't. I, I don't want to install this tonight and and fire up the car. That's gonna make a lot of noise <laughs> because uh, you'll see it when we do the tuning video. What it takes to tune one of these things, uh, it, it it makes a little bit of noise. So we don't want to do that tonight. <laughs> we want to be good neighbors. Because I'm just doing this on the floor of my garage home and done we're done with the carb uh, all nice and clean and you can see that is that's what a year's worth of dirt on the Weber carb looks like all done Okay, so last part of our process, putting the card back on. So I don't know if I have enough battery on the camera to to record all of this, but anyway, we'll see. Basically, just the opposite of taking it apart. So basically, you just put these bolts back in. We'll go back in. So, I have no idea how this video series is going to go. Uh, I wasn't even planning on editing it. I was hoping, <laughs> I don't know why, but I was hoping to be able to put it all together in 10 minutes, which is one take of the SLR. Uh, <laughs> I, I, 
never realized uh, I never realized how much time how much time actually goes into doing this because I just do this as a little hobby of sorts it's really tight I just do this as a little hobby of sorts so I do this as a little hobby of sorts, so I never realized how long it actually takes to do some of this stuff. And it's it's quite long, huh? Like I said, I I never realized even that you know I I I strip this carb so often. I strip this carb so often that and I do it so often. never realize it actually takes like half an hour to clean it. Do the whole clean sort of stuff. Now that I realize how difficult it is to get this one little bolt in behind the idle up actuator. trying to video it and <laughs> it's not cooperating. There you go. So bolt in here. A lot of these things you do by feel because you're not gonna be able to see under there. I guess if you if you've done it long enough. If you've done and I realized watching some of the earlier clips that I took tonight that I'm gonna have to talk a lot louder here, which kind of feels funny because I don't feel like I'm talking to anyone. I feel like I'm just talking to myself. So a lot of these bolts here, you can't even see because it's under the manifold. Uh, I've just been doing it long enough that I just know where they are. But I think this front one you can see. The back one you So get that all together, thank you, wonderful magnetic dish, and then it's just a matter of tightening it up. So, tighten it. You ideally want to tighten it in a sort of uh, crisscross pattern, so upper right. Right, lower left, upper left. Of course, it's upper left is a bitch. You get to because of that idle up actuator there. Not too bad though. There was a there was a setup I built before where you really could not get the wrench between the manifold and a certain bolt. I had to make a special wrench by grinding the crescent off of uh, an old wrench I had. I'm using that. You don't want to do that. Lower right. See, lower right, you can't even see lower right. So anyway, sort of a wrap up to this little exercise to this video. Uh, tell me what you guys think. Is this interesting for you guys? I mean, if it is, we'll make more. I'll probably make more. I don't care how many people found this interesting. At least one person will. If it helps one person, then I'm happy with that. So, tighten these guys down. So, kind of based on this, 
I'm already estimating how long the tuning video is going to take to make. And actually, it seems like the looks like the tuning video is going to take quite a bit of time. Uh, based on my little outline, and once you have that, connect the vacuum port, vacuum for my lap. The pin. Ha! Then I drop the pin. Crap. Ah. Drop the pin. Okay. Cut the pin back. And this is what's hard about doing this at, at midnight. Hard from being tired. Hard to see a lot of this stuff. And it's dark. Pin is in, and then last bit is the fuel line, which is supposed to be sticking up from there. And then the fuel line in. And once you have the fuel line in, very last thing to do is to tighten, tighten the little screw. Once that clamp is in, you are done. You are done, it's going to be done. So, clamp, clamp, throttle, return spring, all carbs, and vacuum lines. Not much, really. I'll check that it all moves freely. And done. Enjoy. Hope you enjoyed that.